Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to another quick draw. And today we are doing our mythical and magical creatures. You're not going to see me today because you're up there. I've got my tripod set up so that it's going to make it really easy for you. And actually, I've got a new microphone on. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear me really well. Give me a heart if you think that this is looking like a good setup because this is just me at home. I'm on my work desk. There's my mouse look. So I'm just at home on my work desk and we're going to do our little quick draw all together, ready to go. All right, so we are going to draw a really weird kind of mythical beast in a bottle. So I'm going to start off, I've got some colored crayons, I've got some uh, felt pens, I've got a black Sharpie, and I've got my pencil and my rubber. Okay, there's Eric and there's Harry the HB. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to draw, let me just clean up my piece of paper there because it's a bit, got a bit of dirt on it. Sometimes they do, don't they? So we'll just clean that up move those back. All right, the first thing we're going to do is draw our bottle shape. So I want you to draw the top of your bottle. This is the sort of thing that you would have found in Harry Potter's potion room, I reckon. So it's, uh, it's going to be a bottle full of weird things with eyeballs and you think, oh my goodness, where's that come from? So this is a kind of rectangle shape, but it's got a bit of a curve there, look, and a bit of a curve under there. And that's just going to help to make it look round. So it's got a round shape. OK. OK, now there's my outside edge. I want you to come in a little bit more from there. So about a centimetre in. Well, not maybe not quite a centimetre. And the same from that side. And that's where our bottle is going to go down. And it's going to go down and out and around. If you want to draw a different kind of bottle, of course you can. Do whatever shape you want. OK, here we go. We're going down. I'm now going to make it go really wide, like a flying saucer. And then back, give it a curvy bottom. And now I need to do exactly the same on the other side. So it is a really wide bottle. It's got a really wide out and swoop and then back in. Now I kind of want those to be a similar shape, don't I? Because it's obviously, so I'm just using my nice sketchy light lines. So I'm not pressing too hard with my pencil, which means that I can rub it out. And then right underneath that, I'm gonna put a little base so it's got something to stand up. So a little shape underneath that to stand it up. It's a bit like a genie in a bottle kind of thing. Okie doke, good job. Now, we're not going to get straight into the colour. Before we get straight into the colour, we're going to draw all our mythical creatures. Now, mine is just this weird thing with eyeballs and teeth. I don't even know what it is. But let's pop our eyeballs in first. So I'm going to have one eyeball here. So I'm going to do a big circle like that. I'm going to have a smaller eyeball here like that. Another eyeball here like that and a tiny eyeball at the back awesome now we want these eyeballs to look like an eyeball so they need to have that kind of rugby ball shape don't they where they come out here the lid goes up and it goes out so this is the actual ball and then this is the whole part of the eye so i'm pressing a bit harder now because i can go around the outside of my eyeball and the same with this one. And the same with this one, but I'm going to change the position so that it looks like it's on the side, so they're squished into this bottle. And then this one I've done as an oval because it's not fully open, okay? So it's a bit more of a squishy eye. Good job. So David says it's looking great. Awesome. Do what, what are your pictures looking like? Anybody else doing some great eyes at the moment? I hope so. Let me know where you're drawing. Um, are you in your lounge? Are you in the garden? Tell me what you're drawing and if you're having a good time, if you've had a nice day at home school. Okay, so these are my eyeballs. Let's do the pupil in the middle of the eyeball. There's one. There's two. There's three. And there's four. So there's my pupils in the middle of my eyes. 
And now before I do the rest of it, I want to mark in where the mouth is going to be. And the mouth is this big kind of open shape. So I think it's a bit like a triangle. So if you, if you mark a big triangle in the middle of that bottle, again, I'm using the side of my pencil. So that, and we're going to put our teeth in. So it's kind of like this multi-eyeball creature, okay? So I don't mind how you put your teeth in, but this is how I'm going to do mine. So I'm going to assume that this is the bottle jaw. I'm going to draw it up and I'm going to make it go down like that. And I'm going to have two big spiky teeth, the big incisors, and then I'm going to do small teeth in between. And then I need to have the gum part of the mouth, which I've just put in there. And then that's its bottom jaw coming in there. Okay, so that's that part of the mouth. Now I want to have these other open. So it's almost like a, it has a top and a bottom jaw, but it has a mouth that comes in from the side too. So to make it look like it's come in from the side, like scary hands, I want you to think of um, a claw. So let's do a claw. One, two, three. Now if it was a bird, it would only have three, but let's make it have five. Okay, five lines down that side. Then you need to do like a little backward C on each one of those. And then you're going to put the claw or the tooth in. And that makes it look like it's coming out of the nail bed. So that's that one side. And I want you to do exactly the same on the other side. So one, two, three, four. It's going to go behind that tooth, five behind the tooth. Okay, now do that back. Oh, this is a forward C because it's this way. C, C, C. And then you're going to put the claw in, put the claw in, put the claw in. Or the tooth, I should say, and it crawls in. And now we have to do the top of the mouth. And the top of the mouth, we're going to make it go up and we're going to do exactly the same. Round it around. Create that little um, curvy shape. And then from the curvy shape, we can put in the tooth. Really gnarly open mouth with lots of jaws. Ugh, looks scary already. Okay, now we, before we join it all up, we're going to put in some weird tentacles. So I want one weird tentacle to come from up here all the way up the top. So let's start at the bottom. And let's put a tentacle. It could be like a, an octopus with suckers, or it could just be a big, curly, whirly kind of tentacle. And as you come backwards, you want to make that tentacle get wider towards the bottom. In fact, that line there just needs to be a little bit wider. So let me just let there. So, oh, no, that's still the same place. Got to get it right for you. So it starts thin and then it gets wider down to there. Okay, so that's that one tentacle. Now you could, like I say, you could put in suckers like an octopus. So you could have little sucker pads. And if you put in suckers, then the suckers get bigger as it gets wider. And then you have to put in another, another line following the same curve, and that's sort of the other edge of the sucker, because you're seeing the underside of that kind of. So you can put in suckers if you want. They've got a little spot usually in the middle. I think that's where they've got some like little juicy gland, and the juice comes out when they suck on things, I think. Somebody told me once. I could be completely wrong about that. All right, so we've got one suckery thing coming out there. Okay, let's put one coming from here. And let's try and twiddle it around there, shall we? Let's twiddle it up the top. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to make it go in behind. So I need to see where it's going. Pretend it's going in behind there, like round there. So it's going to end up going through there. Keep it going. You have to see, You have to imagine the line going through. And it will come up through there. So this line here through there, you'd see it there, you'd see it there, 
you'd see it there and then maybe it's going to curl and come back round like that. Now you can have it with suckers or you don't have to put suckers. I'm going to leave that one without suckers, I think. Okay, let's put some wobbly ones down the end here, shall we? So we've got this funny eyeball here, we've got this jaw. Let's fill up this area. So I'm going to go up and around. You can make them go whichever way you want them to, okay? I'm not going to say you have to follow me. If you've got your own ideas, brilliant. Just make sure they look like they're squished into a giant bottle, all right? So they're all squished in. I'm going to give this one some suckery pads as well. So I'm going to put those suckers in and I'm just going to put it in certain areas when you see the underside. So just like there and there. And when I colour this in in a minute, I'm going to colour the underneath of this sucker area a different colour than the top, I think. So it looks like it's all kind of inside out and round and round. All right, let's have one more and let's make it go up and kind of a knot in itself. So I want to kind of make it look like it goes round there. And then we're going to try and get it, let's get it right to the end there. Like that. I reckon we could have one more little eyeball here. Feels like there's a space there for an eyeball. And then we could have one kind of random little wormy testicle, tentacle there. Okay, so this eye here, we need to incorporate it into our design. So I think I'm going to do the top of whatever it is, the monster head. And let's give it some spiky bits. Let's give it some texture. We're not sure what, what's inside our bottle. We just know it's creepy and it's strange. So I'm trying to give it a little bit of texture. And then I'm going to do these extra, uh, extra um, sort of creases around the eyes. So it's like the fold of the eyelid. Beautiful. Now, this is a very special bottle, so it's definitely going to need to have a cork on it. And I might even do it like a drip of wax, like a seal. Like it's been in Harry Potter, it's in the chamber, in, sorry, in the potions room. Okay, I'm now going to draw nice and hard with my outside line. And then I'm ready to colour it. So you could rub out all your guidelines, but because this is going to be coloured in, I'm not going to bother. I, I might just get rid of that little one there because it's a bit wide and maybe a couple at the bottom. But the rest of the little guidelines are fine, okay? Now you can decide to colour it however you want. I'm going to really go for contrasting colours. So the first thing I want to do is colour the inside of this mouth. And I want the inside to kind of be almost like it's on fire. So I'm going to start off with some yellow right in the centre. And then I'm going to use orange. And I'm going to blend the yellow and orange together. Going round all those gnarly teeth. And now I'm going to do the red. Now these crayons I can sharpen with a pencil sharpener. So I'm just going to sharpen it and we're now going to get to the red which is the deeper color at the very edges of the mouth and this should help to make it look like it's got a big cavernous mouth going around all of those spiky teeth and you can leave those teeth white or maybe they might look nice if they're kind of a yellowy sort of monster color now, once I've done the red, I'm going to layer it with one more colour. And the colour I'm going to use is purple. So I'm going to add purple on top of my red to really get a bit more depth. Depth means it's going to look darker and have a little bit more shadow. All right, so let me find my purple. 
there it is. So I just want to do the darkest bit at the very, very edges of the mouth. I don't want to go over my red, but just where the shadow of the teeth would be, I'm just adding in a little bit of purple to really make it look like it's deep and dark in that mouth. Okay, so that's the mouth done. The next bit is to the eyeballs, and I want to use exactly the same technique. So the, the, I'm going to colour in the pupil for, oh, that's brown, I want black. Where's my black? I think that's black, but I might have to sharpen it. Okay. All of these got broken, and because they're broken, I've got two flat end, ends, but that's okay, we can sharpen it. So I'm going to use the black for the eyeballs, and then I am going to start with yellow, then do orange, and I want to try and create a kind of starry shape. So there's my pupil. And I'm going to do the same. So I'm going to colour each of these eyes at the same time. Oh, it's brown as well. Where's my black gone? My black has gone missing. I've got lots of brown and no black. Okay, so because I haven't got black, I'm going to use purple on top of that brown to make it darker. There's a top tip for you, that is, if you add purple on things, it really takes it back to black or nearly black without being black, if that makes sense. All right, now with the yellow, I need to go in like a, um, a circular shape. So I want to, you want to colour in over the black or the purple or whatever colour you can, and it will stretch a little bit of that colour out just like a proper iris. It stretches a little bit of that colour out and gives it that kind of like stripy look an eye has. Oh, I've got one more eye there I didn't do. So I did the brown and then the purple. And then colour it round the outside like that, stretching it out. And once you've done the yellow, you're going to do the orange. Except for that's red, let's do the orange next. It doesn't really matter which, which way around you do your colours. But I just want to get a nice fiery kind of colour. So I'm going round the yellow next. So once you've done this one, this drawing with me, and you've got the hang of how to create a random mythical beast in your bottles, you could do lots of different shape bottles. You could do like a long, thin test tube. You could do like a wine bottle shape and you could create a whole row of random, funny, weird, mythical beasts that have been bottled like the potions room in Harry Potter. I think that would look pretty spectacular. So I, if you remember, I talked last week, didn't I, about um, opposite colours. And when you put the opposite colours on the colour wheel together, they look really bold and it gives a really sort of bold, dynamic statement. Well, that's what we're going to do today. So all the fiery bits, the eyes and the inside of his mouth, we're doing in hot colours, which are orange, yellow and red, that sort of lava colour. Um, and then the rest of our creature and the bottle, we're going to do in blues and greens so a cool area almost like he's inside inside this funny place okay so i want to do so we've done his eyes and we've done his mouth i'm going to do the teeth and the rest of the body now i want to have still a warm color but i want it to be slightly contracting so i'm going with this kind of flesh tone and i've got a flesh tone i've got a couple of pinks and I've got this brownie colour, and they're the sort of colours that I'm going to use for the body, okay? So, I'm just going to start off by giving my monster, or my beastie thing, an all-over tone in this flesh colour, okay? Don't do the teeth, but you can do the gum area. So, I'm doing the gums. So, all of your mythical beasts, and this is going to help us or well, this is going to help the person looking at your picture understand that it all belongs to the same creature by having that one consistent colour. We can add some tone and shade afterwards 
but if we just start with one color, if you're using crayons or pencils, just pick one color. And if you haven't got this color that I've got here, then just pick another color. It could be a yellow or um, a light brown or just one color that you can see that it's a big tangled up, squished in monster inside this bottle. So you can see when I'm doing these tentacles, because I put the sucker pads on them, I'm not coloring that area, I'm just coloring the top area of it, okay? It's gonna be squished right into the bottle, right down the bottom, so I'm gonna color all of that in. Okay, let's bring that tentacle down the back. I've frozen for some reason, I'm not sure why. Dave, it's frozen, it's frozen, the picture. I don't know why, I'll carry on colouring. Does it say end stream? Has it ended? Just having a bit of a technical hitch here a minute, sorry guys. On my picture it's frozen, so I'm not sure if it's frozen for you, but I'll carry on colouring in case you can still see it. All right, so I'm just doing the rest of his body. Oh, he's got to be all pink in that corner. Round the eye, down the bottom of the bottle. Okay, again, don't do the claw, don't do the teeth, just do the gum area. And this is just your base color. Still going? Oh, awesome. Had a little technical hitch there, guys. That's okay. We're all human. And as you know, seven weeks ago, I didn't even know how, didn't even know how to do a Facebook Live. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's been so much fun learning. But if you can still copy me and you can still draw, then that's all that matters. All right, so that's my base color. And I've not particularly colored that in very well. And that's okay, because I'm gonna use these other colors on, you know, in the areas to create the magic. All right, so where, if you look at these tentacles, if these are on top of the body, then the body underneath needs to have a bit of shadow. Let's move those, because they're driving me nuts wobbling. Okay, so I'm gonna find my next color, which is this kind of golden brownie color. And I'm just gonna color that to make this bit stand forward. So I'm not coloring the tentacle, I'm coloring the gap behind and the area behind. Okay, the same here. To make the, mat, the bottom of his jaw come forward, I'm gonna color that piece there. Okay, now have a look again. Right, I can see one bit that wasn't done. We need to color that bit in because that's the body behind. All right, now I've done that and that bit there. But now I need to use this color to do exactly that. Because it's behind the tentacle, I need to color it for some depth. And the same with that piece there. Now I want to color just where the crease of the eye is to make that a bit shady. All right, so I'm going, you can see I'm following my fingers and I'm kind of looking at my picture thinking which bit should come forward and which bit should be in behind. And if they're in behind, I'm adding this bit of color. And in a minute, we're gonna add a second tone and a third tone. Right, there's another bit that I missed, look. So the, that little bit there and the rest of this tentacle, I missed coloring in that. Not the sucker bits, just the tentacle part. Okay, so let's get this around. So I've got my finger. I'm checking to see which bit goes forward, which bit pops forward, and which bit pops backwards. We, or we say recesses. All right, so that's my second tone, okay? Once I've done my second tone, I'm going to do my third tone. So I'm now going to pick the bits that I want to use. These are the highlighty bits. I'm going to use this bright pink on the highlighted bits. Oh, 
Okay, following it round. So this is the top part of my um, tentacles. I'm adding this bright pink. Almost looks like it's a brain, doesn't it? A brainy thing. Okay, and then here there'll be some nice colour on this one here. So the dark tone is for the shady area and the bright pink is for the highlighted area so that you get that popping forward and recessing back. And these techniques are really good to learn because once you've understood how to make things look like they're coming forward, how to get dimension in your drawing, you can use it for anything. And that's a really good skill to, to be able to do, yeah? I reckon once you've nailed this, you'll be away. You'll be doing all sorts of monsters, won't you? So I'm going to do this bit in the highlighted pink because obviously those bits of that funny old mouth, the clawy mouth, are popping forwards. It's opening. Okay, now this pink I'm going to use for the suckers, the actual sucker pads. There's a technique in art which says that you need to have, which kind of says you need to have a kind of colour story. And the colour story means that you use the colours in other areas of your picture. And that helps to create visual balance, which means that the colours all kind of work well together. All right, so my last colour that I had, you remember in the warm tones, is this kind of almost like a purpley pink. And that's what I'm going to use for the underside of my tentacles. And I'm just going to colour it in around those sucker pads. And so it's a different colour to the red, which is important, but it's still all in the warm tones. So it's all in the warm tones. There we go. And then just like I said to you, I really want those teeth to be an ugly colour. So I'm just going to very lightly, using that brown, just go over the top of the colour. And it just takes the white edge away and just gives a little bit of tone. All right. Okay, so that's that part of the bottle. The rest of this is now going to be the bluey green colour. Now, I'm going to use real dark green right in the background of my monster, my beastie in the bottle. So this is the, the darkest area, the shadiest area, and this is going to help to make the bottle look like it's really deep. Uh -huh. There we go. So I'm just going round the edge of my monster for this colour. And then I want to use another tone. So I'm going to pick my next colour green. And I'm going to go... Trying to blend over the top of that green, but it's almost like a bluey green now. And who knows what this is. This could be fluid inside the bottle or some weird juices or something like that. And then finally, this very blue green is going to be the outside edges of my colour. And I'm going to put a little bit on the base as well. And I'm going to use the rest of this colour to do the neck. Now when you're doing the neck, to make it look like it's a round thing, try and keep an area in the middle where there's a patch of light. And that'll look like the glow from the light reflecting through the glass. So I'm just going to not press so hard on that bit there. I'm going to get some darker green and put some lines through the glass. And then actually I'm going to get a tiny bit of the yellowy colour. This is that 
golden brown that I've got and just fill it in to give some highlights like it's all reflecting. And then my wax seal on top is going to be bright red. You know, like the olden days when they used to seal the parcels and the letters with red wax. So that's going to be that bit there. Now, if you want to, you can go round this using a uh, Sharpie. So you can go round all your bottle. And you have to use a Sharpie when you've used um, crayons or pencils, uh, the sort of wax type pencils, because um, a normal biro just wouldn't go round and go on top of, it will if it's colored pencils, but not if these ones here have got wax in them. So a normal biro just wouldn't go through. You don't have to do this. You could keep it just as a pencil drawing. Or you can do this to help to bring all the picture together. Certainly if you were making this and using this sort of illustration in a storybook, having a beautiful black outline really helps to create the navigation. but you might decide that you just want to keep it as a pencil drawing and that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to show you what both versions look like. So I'm literally just going over those main lines using my black Sharpie. My top tip when we do it, when I, whenever I'm outlining, is I always start at the top and work downwards. And that way, your hand, if it's going to smudge, it doesn't smudge the black pen. Some black pelt pens or felt tip pens smudge. And so I always say that if you start at the top, then if you do have a smudgy pen, usually it doesn't matter. So I'm just doing some little flicks. You can still see the little the other lines that I did uh, using the pencil. So we don't have to copy them. You can just do some extra lines. Now put in his teeth. It's important to also understand when you're black lining things that obviously the line, the black, the black pen itself has a width. And so when you're doing things like teeth or something small, you need to, you need to um, go over the line on the outside of your drawing. Because if you go too close to the inside of your drawing, then if you've got a color in there like these teeth, then it's not going to show up. So you need to almost like go a bit bigger, if that makes sense. Okay, putting in those teeth there. And the gum, and it all connects back. I think it's starting to look brilliant. You could carry on and draw the rest of this. You could put it on a shelf somewhere or you could have some kind of background story, some mystical place that it's held. Maybe it's got a label. You could put a label on it. I think that's quite a nice idea. If it was a potion, what sort of potion would this be? This is the fire fireball, I think. Fire eyeball. You know those um, big gobstock stoppers, those big fire ones. It's a bit like that, isn't it? The eyes are a bit like that. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> you might have a different idea, which is good job, I should think. All right, I've nearly done it. That's my last tentacle. And I think I'm going to do exactly what I just said, which is 
put a tag on it and it's hanging there and I'm going to put fire ball potion there we go so there is my beastie in a bottle and you can carry on and you can create um, a design for where where is your potion bottle or where is your mythical bottle full of whatever it is that you've created if you've done the same as me brilliant if you've got your own little beastie in there then do take a picture and send it to me at you create art at home because I love seeing all your artwork and I love sharing them with everybody so everybody else can see them and get some great ideas. I hope you've enjoyed it today. Tomorrow we are going to be drawing Medusa and Medusa is a mythical, I don't know if she's a god or a, I don't actually, I'll do some research kids and find out, but she has a head full of snakes. So we've learned how to do all these twirly whirly bits today, haven't we? So you, they will come in very handy tomorrow, I am sure. So tomorrow at 3.30, we will be doing a Medusa. So I will see you then. Take care. Bye.